Welcome back to our Philemon study today. It's a blessing to have you with us. I encourage you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Philemon. We have already went through this book as far as interpretation goes. We are now looking at uh, what I have titled some questions for modern day Philemon's. Uh, you know, Philemon was wronged. And uh, as we go through the course of our life, there will be times when all of us are wronged. And the question is, how do I respond when I'm wrong? Uh, the question is not, will you be wronged? It's, how do I respond when I am wronged? And the book of Philemon deals with that. And yesterday we looked at the question, do you have the capacity to forgive? Uh, we need to be reminded that Christ has forgiven us and he's forgiven us much. And he continues to forgive us any time that we ever uh, come to that place in our life that we sin, that we fail him, that we wrong him, that he is always quick to forgive us. We must also remember that when the shoe is on the other foot and we wrong people, that we desire to be forgiven by them. So it is only fitting and it is only proper that you and I would exercise that exact same forgiveness toward others that we desire others to show toward us when we wrong. So I ask you today, once again, do you have the capacity to forgive? The question we want to look at today is this. Do you have the capacity to accept others? In Philemon, verses 15 and 16, it says this. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou mightest receive him forever. Not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, specially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. I want you to stop for a moment and think about what Paul is saying to Philemon here. When Onesimus left, he was a sinner and a slave. And when he came back, he was a saint and a brother to Philemon. And Paul's request was for Philemon to receive Onesimus as a brother in Christ. You know, as we stop and we think about that, we need to ask ourselves a question. Are we able to receive all people? Can we receive them regardless of what they have done, regardless of what their skin color is, regardless of where they come from? And the list could go on and on and on. Are we partial in those to whom we receive or are we able to receive all men? You see, as Christians, we are to practice the same type of acceptance that Jesus Christ practiced uh, toward us, regardless of what they have done to us. Come with me, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 for a moment. We mentioned this verse a few days ago, but let's come back to Ephesians 1 and verse 6, and let's look at it once again. It says there, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. You need to understand, and we need to rejoice today, that we've been accepted in the beloved. And it's all to the glory and the praise of his grace. And God accepted you and God accepted me regardless of who we are, regardless of what our ethnic background is, regardless of, of what we've done in the past. When we came to him in faith, he accepted us. As you think about that, let me take you back to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. It says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So there we have that reminder that those walls of separation that the world builds is all taken, are they're all taken down at the cross. And are we able to forgive regardless of what people have done to us? Let me give you a classic example, and then I want to take you to another passage in the Word of God today. Luke chapter 15. We're not going to take time to read all of the verses. Actually, let's go to Luke 15. There's a few of the verses I want you to look at. Because there's a lot of people today, there's a lot of Christians even today, that act an awful lot like the older brother uh, in the story of the prodigal son. As a matter of fact, I've often said that he had two prodigal sons. It's just one of them never, ever had the nerve to leave home and do what it was that he, that he wanted to do. And as the prodigal son comes home, remember what happened? 
And in verse 22, it says, The father said to his servants, this is Luke 15, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the faggot calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. So as this prodigal came home, he simply wanted to be uh, uh, accepted as a servant. He realized he was not deserving to be a son. But the father says, listen, Kill the faggot calf, get the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, put shoes on his feet, all a mark of sonship and acceptance by the father. And let's rejoice, let's celebrate because my son has come home. And that's the way it ought to be. But notice, if you take the time to look at uh, um, verses 25 through 32, and I'll just read some of them. Notice the reaction of the brother when, when the prodigal son came home. It says in verse 25, Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came near and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked them what these things meant. Now let's just pause for a moment. I believe that he already knew in his heart what these things meant, but he was angry, he was resentful. Verse 20. Seven, he saith unto him, Thy brother is come, thy father hath killed the faggot calf, because he was ang because he hath received them safe and sound, and he was angry and would not go in, therefore came his brother or his father out and entreating him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. You see how he's defend defending himself here? See how he has this looking down the nose attitude at the son that has come home, very skeptical of him. But as soon as this, thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the faggot calf. What a rotten, sorry attitude. Definitely not uh, having the capacity to accept others, not even accepting his brother. You know, others should not have to meet our standards in order to be accepted by us. Uh, you know, if they are accepted by God, who are we to come to the place that we will not accept them? Come with me to James chapter 2, and we'll close out our study today with this thought, and then tomorrow we'll conclude our study uh, on this book of Philemon. But in James chapter 2, as we think about this idea of, of standards and partiality, in James 2 verses 1 through 9, I encourage you to jot these verses down so that you can uh, read through them prayerfully and carefully uh, a little later on today. But it says in James 2, verse 1, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou here, or sit under my footstool. Are ye not partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor, do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seeks? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect of persons, ye commit sin. You catch that? James 2 verse 9 tells us very clearly that partiality is sin. And I'll be honest with you, it's a sin that many Christians need to repent of. Uh, many people are partial uh, in their treatment of others. And friends, it ought not so to be. God is not partial with us, and we should not be partial with others. And when we do, we commit sin. So as we think about these questions for modern-day Philemon, not only do you have the capacity to forgive, but do you have the capacity to accept others? Oh, friends, let's not be guilty of maintaining these walls of separation that men have put up. Next day, we're going to look at this idea of do you have the capacity to love like Jesus? I hope that you are allowing the Holy Spirit of God to search your heart and to search your life as we've asked these questions and to make sure that you're not guilty of these things in your life. If so, are you willing to take the steps that are necessary in order to correct these things and in order for these things to be proper in your life? Oh, friends, let's be careful that we walk in a way that honors and pleases 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not treat people like the world treats people, but let's treat people like the word of God instructs us as a people of God that we should be treating people. Have a great day, friends.